potential problems with the data flow graph representation. Okay. One of them is depicted over here. Essentially, what I have in this situation is something that I'm calling deadlock. Okay. So why am I calling it deadlock? First thing, first question I can ask you is in this graph, as I have shown, uh, shown it over here, right? As I've drawn it over here, what can I do, right? And if I go by the concept of firing sequences, effectively what I have is that B requires some input which comes from A and A requires some input which comes from B. In this particular case, the good thing over here is that I have initial values. Right? So this 2D that I have over here essentially constitutes initial values. Right? And the good thing in this situation is that I basically have this, you know, I have a feedback loop. So unless I had an initial value somewhere, I would straight away have ended up in a situation where nothing can work, right? So in other words, if I had a graph that looks like this, A to B, B to A, this is straight away deadlocked, right? And this is sort of the trivial definition of deadlock. Right? Effectively, what it's saying is A depends on B and B depends on A, right? Neither of them has any data present over there, so I can't start the next computation for either one, right? So this is sort of a trivial case of deadlock we are not interested in. What I have here instead is a slightly more interesting case. It's not initially deadlocked, right? What I can do with this is I can fire. In other words, I'll put the transformation fire A, and as a result, what I'll end up with is a graph that looks like this. It consumes two tokens from the input. And what does it produce on the output? One token. Okay. So I can either put it with this dot or circle over here, or I could the, write the letter D. Right? The letter D is used in order to indicate that it is some kind of a delay element right primarily to indicate that this is some kind of storage but in my opinion that actually ends up becoming more confusing than anything it's usually better to sort of draw a dot over there to indicate that this is a token it contains some data that can be used in order to start off the functioning of a so far so good and interestingly enough my graph is still not deadlocked right because b requires one token it has one token so what i can do at this point is i can fire b what will happen when I do that? I'll end up with a graph that looks like this. The numbers are over here. And that token has basically moved down here. And at this point, this is deadlocked. Why do I say it's deadlocked? Because I do not have enough tokens for A to fire, and there are no tokens on the input of B. So a graph that, that started off fine has now become deadlocked because of the differing rates that were there. In other words, effectively, if you look at it, what has happened is that the relative rates of these of consumption and production of the tokens are not matching. And effectively, I have ended up starving one of the FIFO channels. There is insufficient data for A to proceed. Right? The other alternative that could have happened is that I could end up with a so-called unbounded FIFO, right? What would this look like? Over here, once again, if I go through this firing sequence, right? I fire A, and what I end up with is two tokens over here, right? And nothing on the lower edge, right? If I then fire B and then again B, right? Because after all, it has two input tokens over there. What I will end up with is once again two B present over here, right? Now the interesting thing is I can fire A twice, and what I will end up with is four times B or four tokens present over here. Right? And you can see where this is going, right? Next time I again run BB, this becomes four tokens over here, it then becomes eight and so on. 
right? In other words, every time I go through the loop once, I end up doubling the total number of tokens. Once again, you can see the reason for that, right? A produces twice as much as it consumes, and there is an overall imbalance in this loop, okay? Which means that it's sort of like saying that my FIFO is, is overflowing. Okay, that's the simplest way to put it. Okay, so these are the two primary problems in terms of the modeling of signal processing systems that we end up with when we run through something like, uh, you know, this uh, static data flow graphs with different numbers of tokens on the uh, production and consumption. Uh, like I said, you know, this is a sort of trivial version of deadlock. And one thing that we have not, you know, that we have sort of not paid attention to, the, to so far is that we said that in general, the FIFOs, right, the first in first out buffers between A and B are considered to be unbounded. Okay, that is to say, I can have as much data as I want. Now, in practice, I can never have an unbounded FIFO. I need to have some limit on it. Okay, and the interesting thing is you can actually model it very trivially this way, right? So, for example, let's say that I now fire A once, right? I will end up with one token here and K minus one over here. Once again, fire A, I will end up with two tokens here and K minus two over here, right? Do this several times and I'll finally end up with zero tokens here and, sorry, uh, K tokens over here and zero tokens here, right? At that point, the only thing that I can do is basically fire B and I will end up, you know, once again, going in the opposite direction k minus one like this and one over here once again fire b i can end up with k minus two and two and so on right so in other words the total number of tokens on both the forward and backward edge together can never exceed k so this is a simple way by which i can model something like a bounded fifo if i want okay now all of this is useful what, uh, what we have sort of understood, what we need to take away from all of this is the fact that signal processing algorithms can be modeled using this kind of data flow graph uh, structure, right? And that, that allows us to do certain kind of reasoning about the operation of the signal processing algorithm, right? In particular, we can find out things like, is there a chance that it can get deadlocked? Are there any conditions under which there can be buffer overflows, underflows, right? Starvation of buffers. And you can also find out, especially if you have a sort of, uh, you know, multi-rate system, what is the periodicity pattern that will bring it back to its known state, right? Having said all that, one of the most common operating conditions under which we usually work is to say that there is something called homogeneous static data flow, right? All production and consumption parameters are equal to one. Right? So what that means is every edge, uh, every node basically on every incoming edge consumes one token every time it fires and produces one token on every output edge every time it fires, 